Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I'm here to review a book that uh, by one of my favorite authors, Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Uh, first, a couple of things. I did read an e arc that I received for free via NetGalley, and also Silvia Moreno Garcia is one of my favorite authors. She is a must buy for me. I am collecting all of her books and also like some of the special editions of her books. So I knew that I was going to like this book regardless. But I also think that a lot of people are really going to like this book uh, because of the plot and a lot of the themes that Silvia Moreno brings in. She does a lot of what she does in her um, other books. So if you uh, have liked any of Silvia Moreno Garcia's books, I think you will like this one um, because of she always has a strong heroine, but strong heroine who is in... Like maybe not the best economic situation, not maybe maybe not in the best family situation. There's something, there's some sort of conflict happening in her life, and in the process of the story evolving, this the heroine grows and gets stronger and ends up kind of taking charge of her life by the end of the book. Um, her heroes to me tend to be weak men, <laughs> which is fine as foils or like as like companions or as you know kind of providing support in the story for the female main character all of her books also take place in mexico um, and so we have something really interesting going on with silver nitrate in that it brings all of those element elements in but uh, does something really unique something she's never done before one she sets this in the 1990s in mexico city so bringing uh the stories to the 1990s uh in a way that she had not done before in other books because um, i don't remember where when um certain dark things takes place uh, but it's a very different Mexico City than the one in certain dark things and in her uh, books and different historical time periods she's never gotten this modern uh, I think in, in any of those books um, so let me let me start off with the plot actually so uh, in this story you have Montserrat Monse and Tristan um, they're in 1990s Mexico City Tristan is an actor who um, had something very dramatic happen to him uh, a couple of decades before and so he's kind of a struggling actor even though he had been um, pretty successful in the telenovela genre, the soap opera genre. Montserrat is our heroine, our main character, and she is a audio, audio uh, engineer, uh, sound and audio engineer uh, for films, movies, anything that needs audio work. And she's really excellent at her job. She's very detailed, but she's also struggling at her job. They keep cutting her hours, not giving her enough work. There's some nepotism happening there. And also she is kind of doesn't know how to play the like uh, the social game. Uh, and it's actually not very nice. She has a rough edge to her where she just like kind of rubs people the wrong way and so people don't necessarily want to be nice to her at work but she is amazing at, at her work and she is obsessed with um, movie horror movies uh, especially from the golden age of Mexican cinema now golden age of Mexican cinema is something that I adore a lot of us uh, who uh, are Mexican I think grew up watching uh, golden age era cinema but I did not know anything about golden era cinema uh, Mexican cinema horror and uh, clearly Silvia Moreno Garcia is a fan and so she uh, we in a lot of that through through Montserrat's love of that. Um, so, okay, the, the, the Montserrat and Tristan are friends. They have been childhood friends and uh, they, they have a very special bond because of their childhood and the way that, that evolved. I'm not gonna give anything away there, but um, now they, um, as adults who haven't been able to kind of, you know, find the success that either of them wants, um, they're kind of like trying to figure out the next stage of their life and their careers and the relationship with one another and they discover that one of Tristan's neighbors is a director who directed several like, horror movies during that golden age of Mexican cinema so um, they go visit him and through him a whole door opens to occult the occult world in Mexico City uh, people who believe in magic who believe in um, 
kind of being able to to control uh, other people, uh, curse people, and it turns out that maybe they have inadvertently inherited some curse from that era. And now they have to dig into, okay, what exactly happened during the filming of this uh, director's last film? What is this curse that seems to have been placed on the film, like on the physical film uh, uh, that is left from that movie and what is going on. Uh, through that we also get into Nazi occultism and like just tons and tons of uh, interesting things happening. If you don't like horror books, uh, you might want to be careful with this one. Um, there are there is horror here. Um, there's also, I think, uh, because of these elements, fans of thrillers, I think will really like this this book. It's a bit slower paced in the beginning, but once we dig into some of the occult curse elements, like the plot of the book really, really picks up. Now, Sylvia Murnau Garcia tends to not start off with a ton of plot. Her books tend to start up slow, kind of figuring out who these characters are, figuring out what this setting is. Um, but in this one, once the plot starts, you're off to the races. So I think uh, people who can handle a little bit more slow pace in the beginning, but want that fast paced thriller element towards the end, I think that this might, this will work for you. All right, let's talk about some of the themes. Uh, the heroine here, I think is quite typical Silvia Moreno Garcia heroine. Montserrat is someone who um, has a not great relationship with her family. She's close to her sister, but not to her mother. But her sister is battling cancer. And so um, if that is a trigger for you, that might be something you might want to steer away. This isn't a huge plot element, but it definitely is there. And we see like Montserrat interacting with her sister and kind of the issue of her sister's cancer being be, coming up here and there. Uh, but what I liked about Montserrat a lot that I think stands out from some of the um, most recent uh, Silvia Moreno Garcia heroines is that she knows she's good at her job. Like she knows how good she is at sound um, engineering. And um, so it's really frustrating for her to see like her hours get cut and all of that, even though the people she works for acknowledge what a brilliant editor she is. Uh, but because she, she like this awareness of how good she is at her job, I think gives her a kind of confidence that some of the other heroines in Sylvia Mano Garcia's books don't necessarily have. Um, I, I would love to sit down and kind of analyze all of, all of her heroines and I think I might do that maybe for a future video because I find her heroines just really interesting because they are really great, always flawed characters, but always women who like are very relatable, I feel like. The hero here, Tristan, um, is, is also a typical uh, hero. I, I think he, uh, Tristan, though, is less um, less of a blah male character than some of her other male characters. Like in Mexican Gothic, I found the male uh, characters just kind of like forgettable uh, there. Um, and just because like the, the, the female characters just are the ones who stand out the most. But here I think Tristan really plays an important role. He has a very strong uh, characteristics, even though he is weaker than Montserrat. Um, he's somebody who, he, like, Tristan needs Montserrat. He needs her. And they, they, they do have a kind of codependent relationship going on that to some extent she needs him as well, but he need, probably needs her more than she needs him emotionally. Um, and so, uh, but he's there for her. He's a constant in her life. He values that relationship, even though at times he maybe hasn't made it clear how valuable she is. But, but by the time we get, you know, we get them in this story, he is getting to understand how important Montserrat is to, to him. So I kind of like Tristan um, it, it, for that element, for, for how he cares for the heroine um, and how, uh, but also like how he does not, like he's not, he's just not going to be as good as her, even though he is an actor, he is incredibly good looking, he, he like, he has access to a lot more social capital than Montserrat has, yet within the relationship it is clear that Montserrat is the 
the strength of, of that. I love that. Uh, Mexico. So we get to see Mexico City uh, here once again uh, through Silvia Moreno Garcia's eyes. And what I love about the Mexico that Silvia Moreno Garcia always depicts is that it's always a different time period. She has a really strong sense of Mexico in, in, in her books, even though some people don't think so. Like I know some people criticize previous books for not having a strong sense of place, specifically Mexico. But it is always there. Mexican culture is always weaved through in her Mexico. What I think maybe some might be odd for some people is that Silvia Moreno Garcia is grew up in Mexico. Right, but she now lives in Canada, has lived in Canada, it seems, for, for quite some time. So her Mexico is a historical Mexico and one seen through the eyes of kind of somebody who has left. Right, so it's a Mexico that is flawed and beautiful and a bit nostalgic, but also like not seen through rose colored glasses. I, I really identify with the uh, depictions of Mexico that she has here um, probably in part because I'm somebody who is not living in in Mexico but has uh, that nostalgia feeling for a Mexico that probably no longer exists right I identify a lot with the Mexico of my childhood with the Mexico of my parents which is very different than uh, the Mexico of somebody living there right now um, so I, I, I just wanted to touch on that because I think that there there's something that really speaks to Mexicans outside of Mexico in the depictions of Silvia Moreno Garcia's Mexico. The theme of racism and color, <clears throat> colorism is always present in her books. Here it comes through because Montserrat is darker skin and uh, Tristan is lighter skin, uh, kind of fits into the mold of more of a, a European standards of beauty, but he's not strictly just white. And so um, we, we get how that plays a role as they try to uncover the secrets of this a cult group of people, a, this this occult uh, following that that is connected to the film that the director, um, the last film of the director they just met, and so uh, because the cult leader was like not a Nazi, he was from Germany, but also believed in Nazi like ideas, white supremacy, and has connections to like Nazi occult um, ideas. Now some of that uh, is based on reality. It is clear Silvia Moreno Garcia understands that history, but she also plays with it a little bit, and so not everything is strictly connected to like some historical Nazi belief, though a lot of that I think is she captures the feeling that um, what what that was like without everything being perfectly historically accurate, uh, which I think is the job of the novelist is to take history, historical fact, uh, historical information, but also integrate it into the story. And I think that is done really wonderfully here through the uh, Nazi occultism, through the, um, the horror film uh, industry that that she discusses, um, and and that that all was just really great and as somebody who like doesn't know a lot about Mexican horror films or horror films in general I thought that that was really interesting and I'm, I'm not, I don't take everything as like oh fact right it's it's fiction um, in the end but uh, I loved all of that I loved um, immersing myself in, in, in this book. I kind of like the slow, the slow paceness of it. But yeah, once the plot starts picking up in the book, I cannot put the book down. Like I had to read the rest of that book in like one or two sittings uh, while the first half of the book or so uh, kind of, I was able to kind of space out a little bit more. <laughs> um, so, uh, so from there, hopefully I've given you a good sense of whether this is a book that you might want to pick up or not. I do highly recommend it. This is one of my favorite books of the year so far that I've read. I, I just loved um, every aspect of it. So, um, so hopefully I've given you enough there. I, I recommend it, but uh, you, you get to decide whether you're going to pick it up or not. If you do, if you decide that you're going to pick it up, um, um, or if it sounds interesting or if it just does not sound like a cup of tea either way let me know down in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one bye